In this exercise, we're going to model a corridor along one of these ramps. That's going to include a flyover bridge in this ramp, and we'll model a second corridor that runs out to the east, a, a long, 10-kilometer um, long corridor with a divided highway in it. So we're going to model several corridors in here. Now we've seen so far that we've put our terrain and our geometry in different files, and we've referenced those together as needed, and we're going to continue with that model. That's something that we're going to call federation. We're separating data into separate files. There's a lot of benefits to doing that. One of the biggest is you can share work across a project, a larger project, where you may have one person working on geometry and somebody else on modeling, or maybe you, it's a really big project and you've got two or three different people are working on different parts of the geometry. Maybe some people are working on walls, some are working on small parts of corridor models, and it all needs to hook back together into one final project. So we can federate all this out by putting any data you want, essentially, into separate files and bringing it back together by referencing it. And we're going to do that in our project here. So as we build these separate corridors, we're going to put them into separate files. If we browse to Module 3, we've already set up a few files for you to use here for our main ramp corridor, for the bridge for the ramp corridor, as well as for this Route 97 extension, which is a four-lane section we're going to model. Now, there's nothing special about these files. We've only set them up ahead of time to make it a little faster here. You could go in and create your own 2D file, reference in the geometry, reference in the terrain, and you'd have exactly what we've got with these files. I'm going to go ahead and open up Ramp C now, um, and we'll get started in that file, which already has our geometry and our terrain referenced into it. And the terrain is set active in here. So as this file opens up, we'll then go and select our Corridors tab on the ribbon and select the New Corridor Tool. Now what we see in this environment, on the left here, we do see our two-dimensional part of the drawing, the area we've been working in. We see the geometry we created in the previous exercise. You see the little edge of the terrain here uh, as our terrain boundary. We also see on the right-hand side another view, which is the resultant 3D model that's being created as we do this design. So we're going to do most of our design work in the 2D environment, and we're going to let the software create the 3D by itself. And we'll see the results over here. So as we pick that new corridor tool, we'll work in the 2D area and follow the heads-up prompting. First thing it tells us is to locate the corridor baseline. So we'll select that, and then it asks for what profile do we want to use. If a corridor had multiple profiles, I could pick the, the name of the profile I wanted to use, or I could just tell it to use whichever profile has been set active, which is what we're going to do in this case. We give this a name. I'm going to call this one Ramp C-1. And a corridor is built for us here. We'll add a template drop to that corridor. If we hold down our Alt key and press the down arrow key, our template picker window appears. We can browse down through this and find the templates we want to use. In this case, we've set up a template called Ramp RT Tie that we're going to use with this. So I'll just select that template and accept it. Need to define the starting and ending stations where this template is going to be dropped. I want to start at the very beginning of my corridor, and I can use an Alt key as a shortcut to lock me to that beginning. So I'll click Alt and then Data Point to accept that. Now for the end, I really don't want to go all the way to the end of my corridor down here because I need to stop at my bridge abutment. So I'm going to stop at station 1000. I'm going to key that in and Data Point to accept it. And then I want to tell it the drop interval. That's how often it's going to be doing design. I'm going to say every five meters. Do the design, and the last two prompts are about transitions. If I was transitioning between two templates, how do I want to space those transitions out? I'm going to leave these settings set at zero because I'm only using one template. I'm not worried about a transition here. And it creates that model. 
We can see the resultant model in the 3D space. If we zoom in on the end of it, you can see that we're not just building the top of the model, but we are truly building a 3D model. It includes the base materials, the pavement layers, uh, everything that we would need to model this. Now there is one thing that you may notice in here, the way I did that. If I zoom in closely, you may notice it looks a bit corded in comparison to our alignment in the arc of the alignment right here. And it is indeed. This alignment, even though we told it to drop every five meters in design, which would be relatively tight on this and we wouldn't see the cording, this is not there. This is actually every 25 meters instead of five. There's a factor of five involved here. And that happened because when I ran the corridor, there was a setting here that I kind of ignored. I ignored my feature definition when I just went and ran that. And I took the default, which was conceptual. Now what the feature definition does with my corridor, in addition to defining colors and levels and weights, it also kind of defines a quality. How precise is that model going to be versus how fast is it going to compute? If I use one of the earlier models, like conceptual, what it's going to do is take some shortcuts. And it's going to say, well, I'm going to multiply by five your template drop interval and only drop every fifth one, not every single one. I don't want that in this case. I want to actually bump this up to my final. So we'll do that by choosing the element selection tool, selecting the corridor, which I can do by selecting any of the corridor itself here, or one of these little handles that stick out. If I zoom out here a little bit, you can see the handles along here on both sides. Those are just an easy way to select a corridor. And I can choose my properties tool. And from there, I can reassign the feature definition assigned to that corridor. And I'm going to change this one to a final feature definition. And what you'll see is that this density, as it recomputes here, uh, will close up. It will pick up and design at least every five meters. We can kind of see that along the tangent section here, the even. You can also see that it's going even more densely than that in a curve here. It's going to look at how tight the curve is and it's going to add in additional sections as needed to get a very accurate model. Now let's create another model from our abutment on this side to the end of our alignment here. So we'll do the same thing again, new corridor, Except this time I am going to go ahead and set my feature definition to final up front so I don't have to change that. I'll locate my corridor baseline, reset for my active profile. We'll name this one ramp C2. There's my corridor. I'm going to use the same template drop, so I'll just, or template, so I'm going to just accept that. And then I need to define my starting station. My abutment on this end is going to be at station 1550. So I will enter that and accept it. And my ending station, I'll click the Alt key and lock to the end of the alignment. And my drop interval of five and my transitions of zero, since I'm not transitioning between templates. And there's the model on that side. If I zoom out in my 3D model, we'll see we now have a model on both ends of it. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to model the bridge that's going to go between here. Now eventually I'm going to have my structural engineers model an appropriate bridge that's fully detailed with proper superstructures and substructures, but I don't know what that is yet. But I do want to move on with my road design efforts and I want to have something in there that's reasonably accurate so that I can start designing some of these other ramps and roadways and do my clearance checkings and make sure things are working out. So I'm going to use just a standard road template to kind of emulate a bridge for now until we get the final results from our structural team. Now I could model that right in this file, just like I did these two corridors, but I'm not going to. I'm going to model that in a separate file, back to our federation that we were talking about earlier. Let's separate things out into different files. It makes our, our management a little bit easier. Then later on when I want to get rid of this temporary bridge corridor I'm building and replace it with the permanent bridge, all I got to do is turn on or off a reference and it makes it very easy. If it was embedded in this file, I couldn't turn the whole file off because I still want these two corridors, so I'd have to be a little trickier about how I did it. So I'm going to use the files to my advantage here. So I'm going to open up another file, again just a blank file 
that's already got the terrain and the geometry referenced in. And we'll create another new corridor. Same process as before. Locate the baseline. We'll use the same profile. Uh, we'll name this Bridge Ramp C. Place a template drop on it. We do need a different template, so we'll go back to our template picker here, and let's select our little bridge template that we've put together to emulate a bridge. We'll place that on there. The beginning and ending stations are going to go from station 1000 down to station 1550. Drop an interval of 5, and we'll let that model. So we've got our little bridge in there. Zoom in on the end of it. You can kind of see what our bridge looks like. Now, in this case, the thickness of the bridge deck is you know, probably about what the thickness of a deck might be. Um, but what we really want to emulate here is I'd like to emulate the whole superstructure or something a close approximation to it so that I can do some clearance checking on my other ramps here. So I need to depth, increase the depth or the thickness of this bridge. I could go in and edit my template. I could certainly do that and redrop a, a new template or even edit the template that's used on the drop here. But instead, what I can do is I can use something called a parametric constraint, which is an override to a constraint value that's specified in a template. So I'm going to say I want to use a parametric constraint. I'll pick the corridor that I want to override here. Give it the station range that I want to override, which is going to be all the way from the beginning to the end. So I'll use my Alt key to lock to those. And then it asks me which element do I, or value in my template do I want to override. So I can choose from my different constraint labels or elements of my template. I'm going to pick the bridge deck depth, and then I can override it. Its current value is a negative 0.254 meters, and I'm going to change that to a negative 2.4 meters in depth at both the start and the stop. Parametric constraints can be a tapered value. You may want to do that for something like a uh, shoulder width, maybe that's tapering. But in the case of a bridge deck, I'm going to want a constant depth, so I made my start and stop values the same. Now that I've set that, my deck is deeper now. Remember, this is just an emulation of the bridge until we get our final bridge. This is not that we're going to pour a 2.5 meter thick concrete deck. We're just representing that depth as what the full strooper structure is going to be when we're done with this, whatever girders ended up getting placed into there. Now to finish this lesson off or this exercise off, let's go and build our four lane uh, corridor on the as the project moves out to the east here. We're going to, going to federate that into a separate file. So I'm going to go to my Route 97 extension file. Let's create a new corridor for this one again. Select it. Active profile. I'll take the default name, which it's picked up off the alignment name or the geometry name. We'll put a template drop on this. Choose from our template library what we want to put there. I'm going to put a four-lane divided highway template on it. I'm going to start all the way from the beginning to the end. I'm going to drop every five meters and no transition drop. Now as this processes, you'll see it will take a few seconds to do. This is a, a little over six uh, kilometers or, or almost 10 kilometers, six miles of project here. So it does take um, a few seconds to process, but we'll see it's now complete. We've got a complete 3D model of all of this data out here just like we have had on all of our other corridors. That completes this exercise. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.